sports I've ever witnessed. I'm Grady Matthews. We're in Reno, and as always, this is AccuStat. I'm with Jerry McWhorter in the booth. Jerry, why don't you describe what's upcoming? Well, we've got a great match in front of us. We've got uh, Johnny Archer and his opponent, Rafael Martinez. Now, this is the finals of the winner's bracket. Neither of these players has lost a match. They're both playing exceptionally well. Uh, that's the lag right there. Johnny came up a little bit short. Rafael's going to be breaking the balls. Uh, Rafael's a player that not a lot of people knew uh, a year ago, I should say, but has certainly made his presence known in the last year, year and a half. He's really been playing fabulously and uh, finding himself at the top of the leaderboard quite often. Well, I'm going to stick my neck out on a limb here and suggest that after 30-something years of watching and being one of the best players in the world myself, this guy is the finest nine-ball player I've ever watched in action. He has literally no weaknesses. Which player are you talking I'm, I'm, about? I'm referring to Rafael Martinez. That description goes both uh, for both players, which brings us to uh, the opening break by Rafael Martinez and, and hopes to see a wonderful match. Well, I'm sure it'll be exactly that. And he's got his hands full, doesn't he, in the form of talented young champion Johnny Archer. You know, Grady, one of the things that's interested me is we've both known uh, Raphael and Johnny for several years. Uh, Raphael is really starting to come into his own right now, and we watched Johnny Archer do that, I guess, what was it, two years ago, maybe, where he got to the top of the leaderboard and really started winning tournaments and doing wonderfully. Uh, I think a, a lot of it has to do with really just the confidence of being on the tour and beating these great players and... and uh, giving himself every opportunity and all the confidence to to succeed I don't do you really feel like they're hitting the balls any better than they were a year ago well here's how these great players learn the game both of these guys learned in the gambling arena Johnny Archer in Metter Georgia where he used to lose consistently and rather religiously to road players until finally one day he beat one of them then all of a sudden it was a couple times a month and then one day he started beating almost all of them then he spent a couple of years on the road with Jay Swanson. Uh, Jay Swanson, I don't think I ever saw him shoot a bad pool shot in my whole life. And then he picked up a demure, attractive 19-year-old wife, just as sweet as she can be, and has not missed a ball since. Raphael went to the School of Hard Knocks at 4th and Main in Los Angeles. He's played against the best players in the world for money, and he's used to being under fire. I'm surprised to see him miss that six ball. Maybe it's the first game jitters. He's reaching in his case there and getting a tip tapper, some sort of a tip device. I, I guess he miscued on that shot. Yes, uh, one of the knowledgeable lookers on, Bob Zach from up in northern New Jersey, suggested that he did. Watch out, nine ball. You know, this, uh, I really don't understand this. I'm venturing a guess out of the 10 or so championship caliber matches we've watched here, Jerry. The first game has been a kind of a comedy of errors in probably eight out of the first 10 matches. I think it's just getting out there and getting loosened up. Why don't you tell everybody about the, uh, the match on the adjacent table also? Well, we've got Francisco Bustamante and Buddy Hall, two names that are quite well known to pool enthusiasts. Uh, Buddy Hall is really playing quite well. Uh, Francisco is playing well also. We commentated one of his matches, uh, or yesterday I believe it was, and he was telling us that he hadn't been playing much pool at all. And uh, he lives in Germany, he hasn't been playing a whole lot. Well, he's been playing for a couple of days now, and every match he seems to be getting stronger. Reverse English. I love that way of playing that, that type of shot. Well, you couldn't ask for two greater matches. And we're in the throes of the first game as we speak. And as soon as Raphael pockets is not too difficult, nine ball is going to have a one game to nothing advantage. <laughs> They're in the first game in the other match, Bustamante and Hall. You, t you mentioned that the first game has tended to be a little bit of a struggle here in the matches that we've been witnessing. And uh, we also know how important that first game can be to get that first bead on your side is uh, certainly relieves the tension a little bit.
been having trouble racking the balls here too. They moved from the original break into the table all the way up to the other side of the table and they're still having trouble racking the balls. They may have to call Scott Smith, the tournament director, over for input. Who has bedecked my area with multicolored doodads? You care to translate that? My, my region is unclean, <laughs> fettered. <laughs> Scott Smith is uh, pounding on the one ball a little bit there. Hope to settle him in. One of the rules of the professional tour is that you're not allowed to bang on the balls except for the tournament director. There we go. Those look pretty good even from here. Neither of, these going to inspect them. <clears throat> Neither of these players are weak in the break department. That's for sure, or the shot making department. Buddy Hall's won game number one in his match. Oh, nice break. Pocketed two balls on the break. And I believe the two passes, uh, the seven and three ball, which are by the far right-hand corner pocket. And maybe he can just stop the cue ball. It looks like he's pretty straight in here. Yes, he was. And now he's going to have to go three rails around the four or two rails below the nine and just plan to play the four in the side pocket, which I, I consider to be the right shot doesn't have to move the cue ball as far, no risk of running into balls. Just exactly like that. Isn't that pretty? Now, he can lag it in, or better is perhaps to go down to the end rail and back up. Play it and play in the five ball in the side pocket. I like the rapidity with which this, this great young champion sees the correct shot, too. Boy, he knows exactly what he's about and how to achieve it. Now he'll draw this back, maybe get a slight angle on the eight, like so. We watch Raphael strike this ball right here. I think one of the most important things we know about staying down on the ball, this player, if you watch that, is as solid as any player I have ever seen at keeping his head perfectly still and staying down and shoot, executing the shot. That's for sure. I mean, you watch him, he doesn't move a muscle. Except and for the... It's two to nothing is all I was going to say. You, except for what? Except for the fluidness of that right arm in his stroke. That's it. Well, fluidity, smoothness, being even, that, that's what it's all about. I'll tell you, given this young man's background, he sure has kind of electrified the pool world. He came from a, oh, a not economically great area. And certainly he didn't have the benefit of playing in one of these modern, well-lit, carpeted new rooms that, that seem so abundant nowadays. Colima, Mexico, I believe is his native home. Has he made a ball in the break? Yes. No shot here, though. Now, I, I like thinning the one, knocking it over into the eight, and try to put the cue ball either down behind the two or down there somewhere behind the six or the four, according to how exactly he decides to go with the cue ball. He's looking at this now to see if there's any good safety here. He's a little too far away from the one to try to put the cue ball behind the seven. Hard time reaching this. Johnny is curious to see if the one is frozen or not. This is the new stretch bridge. Our friend Mike Danner created this, didn't he? Yes. A player from uh, Seattle. That's a unique looking utensil which is great uh, to use on the pool table and incidentally uh, to my somewhat <coughs> jaundiced mind, it, it's better suited for one of my ex-wives in other ways. <laughs> I 
Now look at this. Here's a tough pull shot. No way to reach this, and it's too bad he doesn't shoot a little bit opposite-handed. Well, he's threatening to put the cue behind his back, which I know he executes that shot extremely well. Uh, there's a strong chance he'll probably still decide to do that. I don't know. On a thin hit like this, I don't know that that would be correct. The Pat Fleming double kiss shot is also available here if you could reach it. Boy, look at this. This is awkwardness personified. He's cut. He was planning and shooting to cut that ball in. Well, uh, he looked like he was about six inches short on the length of his cue. He's a, one of the best shot makers I've ever seen, Jerry, and I could see perhaps shooting at that if you could reach it. But that has to adversely affect your aim when you have to stretch out awkwardly from that angle. Oh, he's going to fall short here. Now, do you bank this across the side and go three rails uh, around the 7-8 for position on the four ball? Uh, or do you play safe? I, I think playing safe would be the wiser shot. It looks like what he's going to do is pull the two behind the eight ball there and send the cue ball up into that cluster, which looks like he's glued it behind the four ball and executed that shot ex perfectly. He has indeed. Donnie's looking around uh, for what purpose, I, I don't know. Well, the 5-9 being tied up, I consider this to be absolutely good. Now look what he's doing. It's a good shot here. Very good shot. He's going to be on one foul, but what he did was move the 4 to where even if Johnny decides to play the 2 ball and then the 4, he might have a hard time breaking out the 5-9. But he's got a nice angle here. I would just shoot the 2 ball in and stay below the 4 and then play one rail with the cue ball to go into the 5-9 with left-hand English and make sure that I could hit the 5 ball uh, no matter what happened, and then uh, if I don't have a shot, I can play a nice safety. I think that's a wise choice. I like that better than him going, trying to get uh, Raphael on two fouls here, don't you? Absolutely. If he did uh, not get a good lie on the five, or uh, trying to break out the five, uh, he still does have the opportunity to play safe and possibly get continue Raphael's foul. Now, incidentally, it's cue ball fouls only unless you do it during the placement of the cue ball. Now that's a foul. If Johnny had happened to graze that eight ball in placing the cue ball, that would have been a foul. Now this is kind of a center ball type hit. Got to hit it pretty firmly. Left English. One rail into the five. Now I don't want, want to hit, hit the, the other side ball. of the nine. He's hit the nine ball and not aggressively enough and just bumped it to the rail and well, pulled you know it back what, out. You know what he did there? Just what we suggested he'd not do. He needed to make sure he could hit the five. In other words, if you don't break them out, at least do it on the pro side of the, of the uh, tied-up balls. And in that fashion, he could play a good safety. Well, do you give Raphael a ball in hand here? There's no shot. Maybe the next safety won't be quite as good. I don't see a lot to gain by kicking at this. You can't make it anywhere. I don't see any way to get it safe on a kick unless you just happen to get lucky. This is the proverbial rock in a hard place. That it is. I can't see exactly how straight the 5-9 uh, combination is. It's not. It's awry. The 9 is probably aimed oh, 2 or 3 inches above the far left-hand corner pocket. Well, it's a study in concentration. But his options are severely limited from here. Another capacity crowd tonight. Tonight they're sold completely out. Now look what Johnny's doing. He's going to knock the six down. Maybe try to tie it up with the eight. Thanks. No, he wanted to make it. Well, he thought to himself, I'll move one ball that I might get snookered behind. Now here we have the same thing. He's got to be very careful. The tournament director is going to be called over because it's, it's very possible to foul the cue ball. Any type of an elevated shot, any elevated cue shot, uh, Raphael excels at. Well, this is not a hard shot here. Put quite simply, the cue stick can't go forward more than a oh, quarter inch, three-eighths of an inch, perhaps. 
or the foul could occur. It's two to one, Buddy Hall over Bustamante. Oh, look at that nice close up. Great shot. Now look what he did here, man. He took the rails away from young Johnny Archer. Now he's got to go two rails here. Right hand English. Nice medium speed. Oh, can he twist it around one rail? I don't think he can get there like that. This is pretty straightforward. You simply have to go two rails. Try to hit the five. The only way you can hit the five from that angle is to, to elevate the cue, shoot very easily with extreme right English. Boy, excellent hit. Excellent hit and a uh created some distance for Raphael. I think that's about as good as he can hope for. Well, here is an area I sure like the way this young man is playing Martinez. Uh, he makes a big percentage of shots of this nature, long, difficult, and he shoots it in like he's a foot away from Never it. even thought about hitting a rail. No, he didn't, and that perhaps explains why it's so easy. Now you just draw this back, perhaps play the eight in the side, that's fine. Two apiece, Hall and Bustamante. Now he'll follow down on the right side of the nine ball. And then as Mike Massey says, don't dog the cheese. And just like this, it's three to nothing advantage, Martinez. Well, I guess we were, or I was wrong anyway. Uh, Johnny probably should have taken a kick at the five ball to begin with, although he made a nice shot. That was a nice kick shot. Check on the rack. Now he steps away. Raphael probably just looking to see if the one ball is frozen. I'll tell you, Grady, uh, I think the f my favorite attribute contributes to the success of his Raphael is his intensity at the table. I love the uh, passion and the uh, intensity and desire to win that he has, desire to play good pool. Yes, he sure has that. He's got that proverbial fire in his eyes, doesn't he? Yeah, he's got that uh, Mike Tyson hunger. And some of us who have kind of withered with age have that proverbial beaten look. Okay, I guess we're ready to go. And we're back here at the Sands Regency. Nine ball break action impending. I stand corrected. They need to be re racked. He's concerned with those back two balls, a gap being between them. I, I, back two balls, I should say, the two balls behind the nine ball. Well, if they're split a little bit, it makes the two corner balls go high. You know what I don't like about this? If nothing else, has Johnny Archer not disrupted Raphael's momentum? Well, I'll tell you what, I don't think Raphael is that concerned about it. He'd much rather see a, a good tight rack. He's, uh, he's the one that's indicating the arrangement of the balls that he doesn't like, so the time must not be a consideration to him. He's having a little conversation there with the uh, Tournament director Scott Smith. Scrutinizing this rack really has become a large element of this game, hasn't it? Well, you may so phrase it if you wish, my, my friend. I would prefer to term it uh, more of a joke. They need to do something where they get the rack dispensed with. If I paid an admission, I don't want to watch the guys rack the balls for five minutes. I want to watch somebody break and run out or dog the nine. 
Well, I like to watch people rack the balls because when I play, that seems to be what I do the most. And I can identify. Oh, with you're already are working on me. Okay, he's got to use the bridge. And he's going to draw this or follow it. Either way, he's all right here, according to exactly what angle he's got. He's going to come out with a touch of left English. And this one. He's a little too straight to be comfortable following this ball. He'll draw this back, plan to play the three in the side pocket. Beautifully done. He went a little farther than he meant to, however. Now, given the lie of the five ball, I wouldn't lag this. I would elevate the cue and just try to stop the ball. You don't have to hit this very hard. Well, he cut the three ball into the thin part of the side. That's why the cue ball traveled as far as it did, but without penalty. One rail out for the six. Perfect angle. Just below center right hand English, or he can just follow forward if he wants to. Like that. Got a nice angle to get on the eight in the corner or the side, but I suspect that the corner will be where he plays it. No, he's playing it for the side. Either way, it would have been highly satisfactory. Bustamante has gone ahead of the rifleman four games to two. Well, I tell you, uh, Johnny Archer better watch it. This guy could be like a runaway freight train. Runs out, runs out, runs out. Maybe we could get an early Accustat figure on how these players are performing. I'm going to take a quick shot of here at uh, Francisco Bustamante breaking the balls. You'll notice that Francisco is breaking from the different end of the table that uh, we are in the feature match. Well, I think that provides a nice contrast, a certain uh, lopsided symmetry, if you will. Well, it would appear that we, we've got more problems with the rack. Let me ask you a question, Grady. Uh, it's the, the consistency that these great champions are able to break the balls and play that one in the side pocket you know it doesn't seem it doesn't seem to me ten years ago that that was really a consideration or something that was really thought about well no we made great strides in the break it's obviously the most important shot in that ball okay he's made two balls on the break that's Martin is currently shooting at a 9.43 pace, and I believe, uh, Jerry, he's kept that up pretty much the whole tournament. Well, what error has he made? He missed a ball in the first rack, and I can't recall the others. Okay. Going to lag straight forward here. He missed that one ball where he was at an awkward angle and really had to stretch. Oh, yeah. Now, he's going to have to come back on the right side of the five here. This is a tough shot. Oh, he went into the eight. Now, you know why he did that? I like that, because he could hit it with an English, which made the pocketing of the five ball close to 100%. Pocketing of the four ball. Or the four ball, excuse me. Okay, now he'll just come out one rail with... Uh, just a touch of draw, a little left English. Play the eight in the side pocket. And this is a shoot and stop proposition. Boy, is this gentleman playing great nine ball. All right, let's look at Rafael Martinez's break. There's the elevation. Boy, his stick went straight ahead, straight back. He's Pretty nice form, I would venture to say. Absolutely. Okay. Five to nothing, Martinez. I recall, uh, I guess it was, what, a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago, witnessing you beat uh, Buddy Hall on this table 11 to nothing. 
Yes, and I remember that it was 11 o'clock in the morning on Tuesday morning with no people here for no money, and I was 3,500 miles away from home. I don't think I've ever seen Johnny Archer take a beating like that. We saw one other time where uh, uh, Earl Strickland beat Nick Varner 11 to nothing. I got skunked a couple times in my career. And it's nothing to be ashamed of. An 11 to nothing loss is no worse than an 11 to 10 loss. In fact, it might be easier to take. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, uh, this is Johnny's first chance in quite a while at the table. Down five to nothing. Oh, boy. The wheel fell off there. Well, I've suggested all week that this blue circle cue ball is a little light. How many physical examples must I present uh, to clarify my case? Long, tough shot, down five to nothing. He wants to stay down and be smooth. I wouldn't even worry about the cue ball here. I just try to make it. Nice shot. And he's still got problems with the four here. He's got some choices. And one of the things the new tapers on the cues, Jerry, you're a cue maker, you're familiar with this, that I like is that with the kind of modified European billiard taper, you can aim straight at the pocket with the object ball. I like going uh, around the three rails here to play the four on the side and have the cue ball like go between the... Um, Four and nine. So you're telling me you prefer a uh, a longer taper or a fairly stiff shaft? Well, I want a middle of the road kind of product where I lose maybe five percent of my English yet it deflects only a little bit. I believe he's going to play the combination. Oh, he's lining that up. Oh, he had a little straighter angle than I thought. Actually, that was a nice shot. And Lus, he has to hit the six. Now, if he's got to hit the six, this could present all sorts of problems. And he sure does not want to fail to get out in this instance because that will not ameliorate his present situation. That's a nice shot. And he's got a perfect angle to shoot the five in the corner, go to the side rail and out oh, a few inches. I'd use maybe just a touch of left angle, exactly like that. Now this kind of shot, it seems patently easy enough, yet you can kind of under underhit it or overhit it, so that's why I like going forward here. That way at least you don't have a problem with the speed. And these pockets have, as we've suggested all week long, rather forgiving, so this angle isn't too difficult. That's a good shot. Now he'll just kind of slide the cue ball out to his left, oh, a foot or so, and play the nine in the corner by which he's standing. Beautifully done. And assuming he makes the nine ball, it's going to be five games to one. Martinez. Well, Johnny's put himself on the board, and let's see how he uh, breaks the balls. Well, everybody's got their own opinion. I think he's got the best break on the tour, Archer. But some days, he, he doesn't control the cue ball. He gets a little wild, and if he's having a day like that, then he has, has problems. But certainly, if he has the break working, he's one of the powers that be in this time-honored and difficult pursuit that we call nine ball. Raphael seemingly having a little difficulty with the rack as well. Johnny's <laughs> paying attention to the table next door. Well, he just wanted to make sure he didn't stand in somebody's way and going to inspect the rack. All right, let's look at Johnny Archer's form as he prepares to break the balls in game number seven. Okay, our director of operations informs us that we're going to see that break in slow motion a little bit later. <coughs> Johnny knocked that, that nine ball four rails all the way around the table into the position that it's at right now. 
Now he may have a shot here to thin the two and, and go to the end rail and behind the four. Hard for me to see from this vantage point. If not, uh, he could send the cue ball down to the other end of the table and knock the two ball over by the four. If he does that, he risks leaving a dead combination. Or a third option, he could roll out. He's looking at this, just wondering if he can strike it thin enough with enough right English to make the cue ball go behind the four. That's a risky shot, but it sure will pay a reward. Elevating the cue will will help him get it there, provided he doesn't hit the bottom part of the ball. Now I like a level cue for this shot. Thin, loaded up with right English, and easy. The English always takes quicker, the easier you shoot. Nice shot. Here comes the slow motion replay of the Johnny Archer break shot. Boy, he almost looked like a, a well, well, I don't know, what, what's the male version of a ballerina? He almost looked like the swan princess in flight there. But he got the job done. He sure got enough power on it. Control the cue ball. He was a little unfortunate not to get a good shot on the two ball. But he played that nice high percentage safety. Bottom side of the two he wants to hit here. Well, he hit it too thickly. And he's left a shot. And this has come up already about ten times this week. Shots of that nature where you have to kick at the ball. Hitting it thickly, invariably, you sell out. Now here he just wants to make sure to make the combination. He'd like the two ball to just kind of replace the four, just like that. And Johnny is kind of long and lanky, no trouble reaching this. He'll draw back for the three ball, which is on the lower end rail. Oh, he's going to shoot it left-handed. I didn't think so. Is now, it? watch this, Grady. He's using this bridge that is uh, a sponsored product of the tour with an attachment that lengthens the queue. Now, you'll, he's one of the people that understands how to use this product properly, and you're going to see what kind of action he gets. He's going to shoot the shot with the bridge and the extension and use his natural stroke. You'll watch his back arm hanging at just as normal, and he's going to draw the ball back. Now this is a, a telescoping product that you can lengthen the, the bridge handle to, to whatever length you'd like. Now he's taken a second to adjust the angle of the bridge handle to, to uh, further the ease of this shot. Well, that's an interesting new tool and one perhaps that is long overdue, I can certainly see the benefits to this. As long as somebody doesn't mistake you for a pole vaulter. <laughs> Chalk in his cue. Well, I like taking a little more elevation here, even though you can use your natural uh, right hand grip. Well, he would have liked to draw him a little farther, but he's all right there. Well, I think he's got to go two rails here, down to the other end rail and back up. And in that fashion, he can hit this with uh, enough speed to have quite a bit of accuracy. Rolling this in the pocket's pretty tough. The important part here is he just doesn't want to hit any other ball come between the five and the and the between uh, the seven. five and seven just like that well, that's natural and for aspiring players can you see how much better that is than just trying to roll the ball in and go one rail with the cue ball i see a lot of balls missed like that jerry absolutely now two rails you gotta shoot it at the same pocket. the same speed you would if it was the nine ball for all the money true Okay, now he can, uh, I like this, uh, high right hand English. Could have been a little firmer. He wants to roll forward a little bit and just play the nine ball in the right hand far corner pocket. And 
The score now stands five games to two. Rafael Martinez. What a great match. Two young fireball players that are dangerous at any point in the session. Oh, sure. That they are. There's Bustamante notching up a bead on his side of the scoreboard. There's a good background view of the crowd at large and attendance here this week at the Sands. Great tournament. 20th edition of this long-running tournament. Second and linked only to Barry Berman's U.S. Open. That's Jerry McWhorter's banner, fine cue maker who's sitting in the booth with me. Who's that gentleman in, on the monitor? I, well, he is that. He's inscrutable, to say the least. I'd hate to sit across a poker table from him. <laughs> I couldn't read him, I'll tell you that. There's a... Yeah. All right, here we go. See if Johnny can keep his break working. That safety won him the game that he played, and his safety game has, has really picked up. He didn't mean to come back, and he's not going to have a shot, although he did pocket three balls on the break. All right. I don't know where to tell you to roll out here. Tough position. Who rolls out up by the nine ball. Uh, Raphael will either bank the two ball or play a safety. He can't roll out to try to leave the two ball straight in. If you tie up the six seven is no good because you have to leave a shot on the two ball and a lot of times you leave a dead combination. It takes a special set of circumstances to make it worthwhile to tie balls up. I see more games lost than I do won by leaps and bounds. Well, let me ask you a question. Up. If he pushes out to leave, he's going to pocket the eight, to leave the two straight in. Well, a good now, player... What, is the, what, are the chan what are the odds? What do you think the odds are of him get making the two? Obviously, he's just going to be able to roll forward. Well, or he's stop not going to do that. Pass. He's going to thin the two and cut it to the middle of the end rail and the cue ball back down the other end of the table and Johnny's going to have a long, hard shot. No, he's going to roll it. Well, you, everybody knows how I feel about that type of percentage. To take a hard shot, to get another hard shot is three to one against you, and that doesn't add up to winning nine ball. Even if you're Rafael Martinez and you happen to be pocketing balls better than anybody in the world, that's not a high percentage shot. I sure would have let Johnny Archer shoot that again. Now safety, the two ball down to the middle of the end rail. He'd like to put the cue ball behind the nine ball. But he didn't get it there. What he did do is get the two ball close to the rail. Now this is a tough, 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 tough shot. I like going ahead and going for the bank. In the pocket to Rafael Martinez's left. Oh, and the right if I miss the screen. bank, no, to his left. not To, to the, the right of our screen. To the right on, on the monitor. And if I missed it, I'd want to miss it slightly thick, and in that fashion I have a chance to get it safe. Boy, boy, long distance, that is incredibly hard to do. And we talked about that. That's not very high percentage. And given Johnny Archer's proclivity for jump shots anyway, I don't know that that would have been very safe, even had he snookered him behind the seven. Now he'll lag this in, play the four in the corner. That's perfect. He has a nice natural angle to get on the six. Now here, just above center ball, not a center ball, uh, they don't want to scratch across the side, he wants to go just beyond the side pocket. And almost any angle on the six will suffice. Very nice. That's perfect. Now he has only to pocket the six ball, and the remainder of, of this rack will be a foregone conclusion. I like what he's doing here. You're not really drawing. It's kind of that drag draw stroke. Now he can go two rails or three or even one, but I like the the, uh, the two rails like that. 
that's so natural. And then simply pocket the nine ball. And we have an ever tightening match that represents that concept in the score of five games to three. Johnny Archer trails. Every single match that I've done commentary on here this week, one player or the other has gotten out to, a, I don't know, a three, four, five, six game lead, and in every instance, the opposition was able to get back into the match. I mean, five to three is certainly in it. Well, I think part of that has to do with the, the uh, equipment. The tables are playing uh, very generous. The balls are breaking well, so even though a player is behind, if the momentum does swing and a person starts making balls on the break, they're able to put themselves back in the match without too much difficulty. Okay, five to three, championship nine ball at the four. Accustats the vehicle. Johnny checking the rack ever so carefully. And here we go. Nevada's version of the Pro 9 Ball Tour. I'm going to get up and shadow stroke a moment. Can't fault him for that. There's a nice shot of Johnny Archer's bridge hand. And the degree of elevation. I don't believe he pocketed the ball on the break. No, he didn't. I don't know. Can looks like uh, Raphael can see enough to cut that one in. He's going to take a short break. <laughs> we'll be the players right are going to take a break. We'll join them. Well, here we are, Jerry. I think if he can see the right edge of the one ball as he views it, no power on earth can keep him from shooting at it, although the safety would probably be better advised. Well, he's going to shoot every opportunity he gets unless uh, unless he really sees uh, some very easy profitability of a safety. He's, an, he's one of these players that uh, figures he can run out from everywhere and, and proves it time and time again. Boy, look at that. He thinned the one in, came back up table, ran into the three, and perfectly put himself in line. So now what, tell me about whether he should have played safe or not. No, well, the key to that shot was he hit the inside of the six ball to come back where he could hit the two ball. Now, I think we'll see him play the nine here. I don't see any reason to run out. Uh, I, I, he's going to run out. The balls are all opened up. Oh, he must have had a, a more awkward angle than I he thought. He came straight in on the, on the four, and away he goes. Got to be careful getting from the seven to the eight. He wants to make sure that he gets an angle on the seven, and he'll plan to play the eight, probably in the far right-hand corner. Have you known Raphael to play any one pocket at all? Yes, he's become a very, very good player. Really? In fact, I look forward. He and I are going to play. There's been some that's been bandied about. I look forward to it with great relish. Whether my pocketbook will be able to stand it is another proposition entirely. He'll be a hard guy for me to play one pocket against, too, because you may rest assured I have no idea what he's going to be shooting at. Well, you've played Keith a lot of one pocket, haven't you? Well, that even worsens the situation. Keith has been a space cadet low these many years. Okay, six to three. He shoots about it, shoots at everything in sight, doesn't he? Keith? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I tell people this occasionally, and they look at me with disbelief. It took us nine years to get Keith to wear shoes. <laughs> well, I've seen him getting fined at tournaments for not having a belt on. Can you? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I want to tell you a little story. You know, I had the tournament at the Hilton a block from here. I added $61,000 to it, and everybody got at least $1,000. We had 111 players. Out of the 111 players, all pool players, 26 of them didn't even have any ID. All right, I don't even know how, how can you even go through life like without a driver's license or social security card? 
so Keith <laughs> Keith had me make out his check to Harry Snag Nasty, and 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 we got it cashed. <laughs> okay, three to six, Archer Trail. Nine sixty-two at the moment for Rafael Martinez, and boy, is that ever championship nine ball. He did not pocket a ball on the break, but Archer cannot see the one ball. 909 for Archer. That's pretty respectable, yet he trails. Bustamante leading Buddy Hall 7 to 4 and breaking. Well, this is this is tough here. I don't see any great place to kick out here. He says he's going to push. I guess he's going to roll into the five. Well, I don't know. He's, uh, well, what he's going to do is go to the in rail, if told to shoot again, and try to hit the high side of the one and play a safety. The cue ball goes all the way up to the other end of the table. However, Raphael, calculating that, probably going to take that shot himself. This is not a hard shot. All he has to do is hit the high side of the one. This is a one pocket shot. Yes, it is. And as we mentioned, Raphael has been playing a lot of one pocket lately. Oh, he missed the whole ball. You can't do that. Well, I don't know that I would have taken that. I, I think you. Got, I think it would be wise to pass that shot. Uh, I, I think that uh, going to that one rail and trying to hit the high side of the one, isn't there a strong likelihood of double kissing the one well, ball? Well, you have to hit it a little thinner than that. Now, Johnny's got a problem here, Jerry, and getting from the two to the three. Got to be very careful. I think he wanted to get an angle where he could just uh, kill the cue ball and play the three up the long rail. And I believe he's obtained that. Like this. Nice shot, nice shot. Now this, the problem with this shot is that struck with just a regular high ball, the cue ball goes directly towards the four ball. And if that occurs, of course, he will not have to necessarily have a shot. See, it's going right towards the four. Now he's got a hard time getting getting position on the five. He either has to kill the cue ball, which I think is the correct shot. Uh, going around the table is really fraught with peril. He'll thin it into the left-hand pocket there, spinning the ball in with trying to control the speed and hope the cue ball doesn't come up too high. Boy, it didn't come up high at all. He really hit it well. Well, he uh, is kind of a master of that type of shot. I would play the six in the side pocket here. No reason to mess around with a, a touchy position shot for the corner. And that is, uh, you can't do it any better than that. He's even got the luxury of being able to move the cue ball towards the seven a little bit, not that he needs that. And he can shoot and stop or draw it back. And I would draw it back. Just like that. And without much further ado than this, we're going to find that it's an infinitesimally closer match which is reflected in the 6-4 score in favor of Martinez. Johnny seems to be looking at the, the uh, Buddy hall Bustamante match. Occasional interest. Well, uh, there may be a reason for that, except for one thing. He is at the table, Archer is, but sometimes if I'm losing in a match, I find that it helps me regain my, my concentrative powers if I look at something else. Uh, and certainly to uh, to gaze at uh, the copious pulchritude in attendance, which certainly might not be might not be fit. So I look at an adjacent match. I didn't bring my thesaurus with me, so be careful, Grady. Well, that looks like a ceiling and AccuStats wiring. Is there a reason for showing us this paragon of interest? <laughs> oh. 
our cameraman <laughs> is giving us a panoramic view of the uh, tournament room and of the handiwork that he employed in putting those cameras in, in the ceiling and the, the great lighting canop canopy that they have above the feature table. I think he's admiring his handiwork. Well, they do a nice job. They really do. I don't envy them the work that they put in. And there's the phone number if you want to avail yourself of that quality product. Here we go. Six to four. There's a nice shot of Johnny in literal preparation for crushing these multicolored globes. He didn't make a ball. And he has not left Raphael a shot unless the split shot is on. The seven ball, though, I think that, that uh, Raphael cannot keep from hitting it too thick. He's over that over the four ball increases the difficulty of this shot tremendously no matter what he wants well, to do. Well the safety was absolutely the correct shot there. Did he get the cue ball behind the five? Johnny can a little bit of the this. five, the two ball I believe is also helpful in providing the snooker. Now I might consider playing the nine here. Two rails. <laughs> the in rail, the side rail, the nine ball, and if he misses it, a pretty good chance to get safe. I don't know that I see what you're... Just bank the one into the nine. He, I don't, he can't hit the one. Sure he can hit the one. I don't think he can. Maybe if he jumps the ball. It looks like to me like the five ball's got him snookered a little bit. Well, he's using a level cue. Well, I guess he can shoot right at it. Oh, he could hit the other side of the ball. That's a pretty good shot, except that he left a, a bank shot. Raphael needs to be careful here. A lot of bad things can happen. Scratch across the corner, end up behind the nine, end up behind the three six. He's going to nudge the nine and it... Uh... Now look what happened there. He overcut the one slightly. Had he made the bank, he would have been behind the nine as my prognosis indicated. Now, he's got a tough, 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 tough kick shot here. From the position he's in with a lot of English, two and three-quarter diamonds up on the far right-hand side rail takes him to the corner. However, two imposing problems in the form of the two and eight ball. If he goes two rails, the eight ball's in the way. So his only choice is to hit past the two ball, elevate the cue, and use some left English that I see. I mean, it's if he wants to try to make the ball. He tried to tie up the nine and the seven ball since the three, is, three and six are, are tied up. He did not succeed in that effort. And let's see how Raphael handles this. I kind of like uh, playing the two ball on the side but staying on Raphael's side of straight in the side pocket. And in that fashion, you can go two or three rails into the three six, or the three goes in the side where he plans to play the two ball. It looks like what he's planning to do. Yeah, this is perfect position. Now, I like going one, two, three, and into them. Yeah, coming behind in them. from behind the three six is push that way. He'll be pushing the balls. Wow. Looked well, like he, he was playing he, position for the side pocket. Right. But that's uh, a little touchy there. Yeah, uh, the zone of position is so small. I kind of like going into those balls and pushing them out to the middle of the table and should come up with a with a good opportunity. Now, this is a nice shot. Let's see if he, how he plays this. Now, he, look what he's going to do here. Uh, he's scuffing his cue. It's possible to kill this ball for the cue ball. Low right English, a relatively slow speed. I mean, you load this up with draw. Or... You can go two rails, go all the way down to the end rail, and back up for the four. I kind of like this kill shot, and I hope he shoots it. It's one of the prettiest shots in all the pool. Well, I think that's that's what he's 
the way he scuffed his tip up. He's now watch his cue ball. Really load the cue ball. Ah, watch that cue ball. I love that shot, but he didn't make it. See how that cue ball drew and everything, right? Hooked off the rail. Sure. Now for Archer, uh, where's the route to the four ball? Am I blind? I don't see it. No. He's got to draw beyond the nine. I don't think he has a straight enough angle to come. It might be able to get the cue ball oh, in the, uh, kind of in the middle of the table. That would be satisfactory from that kind of position. Oh, he had a he straight, straight angle. Up, yeah. Okay. Now this, he'll, he'll play to draw it back a few inches. And the rest of the ball's lying in relatively favorable position. He'll go two rails here. High ball, left English. One, two. And here it could be disastrous if he ended up straight in on the seven ball. So he'll make sure he's not straight. I like just drawing it back a foot or so. Just like that. Now he can hit this with anything he wants and just come off the side rail. And of course he doesn't want to be straight in on the eight ball. And he's not going to be. He's going to have a perfect angle to get on the nine. Well, he came a little farther than he wanted. This isn't so easy here. I might go two rails inside the nine here. This is tough. I think he's just going to roll it up into the roll it up and shoot the nine in the far corner. Boy, I wouldn't do that. That point is bigger than life sometimes. Well, he's about a he's about a half inch off the rail. The nine ball is. Notice I called it by its nice name. What was that? Oh, nothing. It was. A negligible comment. Well, he went the way that I suggested to be the highest percentage, but he, he caught the nine. Now this, I like just above center ball. You play to overcut it slightly and hit it with a little speed, just like that. He undercut it and filed well, it in. But he didn't play to undercut it. Six to five. And as we have grown so used to watching, just another great match. I am thoroughly enjoying this, Jerry, aren't you? We've seen a lot of good pool here. This is, uh, I suppose, if I would have looked at all the matches through the course of the last couple of days, this would have been one that I really would want to sit down and watch. Sure. Bustamani leading Buddy Hall, 9-5. to five. My friend and AccuStats friends, David Maddox, informs us that Buddy has already won five matches today. Well, he got himself on the loser's bracket. That can't be that right. He didn't play five matches today. Four. This is fourth match. Well, I played here, David, uh, I forget how many years ago, four or five years ago, and I had a broken foot in a cast, and I had to play seven matches the last day and would have had to play two more to win the tournament. And I had a talk with the, uh, you know, the powers that be, and suggested perhaps that might be a little bit too much pool. <laughs> <laughs> so you just found it easier just to lose a match and and report no, to the I gallery. Tried, I tried to win it, but uh, to uh, be in that cumbersome cast for that period of time was was rough. Having a little problem getting these balls racked. But we may be ready to go at any second. Scott Smith tapping the balls with some measure of vigor. Now, Johnny's changing sides. I like this because he hasn't really been getting the results that he desires. And he can break well from either side of the table. We might, might remind the viewers that the score is Johnny Archer five games and Raphael six. 
This is a very important game to Johnny. Tie the score up and keep him breaking at the table. You made the one in the corner pocket here and has the 2-9 tied up down there in the left corner pocket. No, he's going to play the bigger. Carom. Yeah, it's, it's lying perfectly. It's, uh, and he'll use right-hand English. Now, you don't follow this ball here. Use a center ball. Oh, is this fascinating. 9.39 Archer shooting at. What a pace. 9.14 for Martinez. And, of course, as we all know, or if you don't know, I'll inform you right now, a 1,000 is perfect pool. All right, six games apiece. You know, I miss when they used to score the AccuStats at all the major tournaments. That was a lot of fun because as a professional, I know that I could check my, my performance average and see what areas I needed the most work on. Well, that service is still provided uh, on the AccuStats videotapes, many of the matches. That's TPA is total performance average. I wonder if anybody does a TPA on marriage. That's a service I would consider subscribing to. And with that thought in mind, let me enlighten everybody that might not know this. Dr. Ruth commands an appearance fee, fee of $50,000 to go out there for 45 minutes and, and, uh, oh, and mutter, uh, mutter risque nonsense. And <laughs> believe me, that makes me want to reevaluate my personal philosophies about life. <laughs> Well, the, the AccuStat system is built on uh, calculating all the balls that are pocketed and all the errors that a player accumulates, each error having a number value which detracts from the total. If you wanted to have a marriage TPA, you'd have to make a list of all the errors and what well, the numeric it. value they have in detraction. I love every AccuStat product. I really do. And I want our producer to seriously consider having Dr. Ruth as a guest. And with that, we'll, we'll get ready to watch this upcoming break. I got a few questions I need to ask Dr. Ruth. And I'm sure she can probably answer them satisfactorily. We've been talking all week long here, and I can't think of a single area bearing in mind that this room could be a little bigger but it's all they have to work with and th uh, that in mind they do a great job I mean in my opinion this is a quality tournament yet uh, I kind of dislike uh, not only as a commentator but as a spectator and a lover of pool this agonizing weight every game to rack the balls Raphael's telling the uh, tournament director that he just can't seem to get the balls to respond well to the rack uh, why not turning just, it over to Scott? Why not just put them where they settle, push them up, and take the rack off? Well, if the balls aren't frozen to the, if the three and eight are not frozen to the one ball, and there's gap between the balls, Johnny's gonna is going to is going to not be pleased with it, and is not gonna is break the balls. It really is getting a little bit uh, ridiculous. Yes, it is, and, and I'd like to tell all of our viewers that uh, it's becoming appalling at uh, what an effort it takes for the likes of me to find something to talk about and be nice <laughs> as they go make their way through racking these balls. All right, it would appear that maybe we're finally ready to go. 11-5, to 5, Bustamante overhaul. The audience applauding there, that wasn't, uh, they weren't applauding Scott actually being able to rack the balls, although that probably would have been appropriate. It probably would have, sir. Well, you think the rifleman has run out of gas, the big guys who have been around major tournament arenas the last day still alive many, many times. Come back many, many times. But trailing 11 to 5 on this kind of intricate, romantic Nevada evening may be more than he can handle. I don't know. Well, I'll tell you what. Johnny uh, is not getting good success from the break. 
Uh, well, no, I guess he did make a ball on the break, and he's straight in on the one. Excuse me. This will be, uh, odds are he's going to take the lead here at seven games to six. Well, he's in pretty good shape here. He can just kind of punch this ball up beyond the six. Now, he didn't want to get where he had to hit the nine. He's going to go below the nine. Oh, he can draw above it if he wishes. It's just like what he's going to do and play the three down the long rail. He's a little straighter in than he meant to be. I think we'll see him just hit this with a center ball, come off the rail oh, a couple inches, and just play to lag the four in next. Now, he's got to be careful here. He could go too far. He wants to use left angles. That's going to kind of slow the cue ball down. Well, he elected to go to the side rail and out uh, so that he wouldn't have to slow roll the ball. And he's really made a a, uh, a careless error. Well, I think if he meant to play it in that way, which is he obviously did, he hit it a little bit harder. It again, that testifies of your philosophy that hitting a shot harder, hit it too hard is usually better than not hard enough. No, I, that's not what I said. I said on probably 90% of your shots, you're better off too far or uh, not far enough, depending on the lie of the ball. Isn't that what I said? This situation no, would be too far rather than... Oh, this situation. All right, I'm sorry. Well, we get to look at this extension equipment once again. Bustamante's still at the table running out. He's it would appear preparing to go on the hill. Well, to five, Bustamante overhaul. Well, he's got some choices here. He can bank the five. I don't think he's got to cut at it or play safe. I think he's got to play safe. And if I were going to play safe, uh, I probably would try to knock the five ball perhaps up by the nine. But I don't think he's got that option. The angle looks like he could scratch. And that's what he's looking at. Maybe he's better off to go ahead and shoot at this. I don't know. I wouldn't want to play some kind of bunt safety. I want to give myself a chance to win. He's just going to knock it over on the side rail. Which, in my opinion, is kind of a tentative shot. Bustamani, without hesitation, is going to try to bank this across the corner. Rafael Martinez. Oh, did I call him Gilbert again? <clears throat> no, you called him Bustamante, and if he banked the ball, somebody would probably have to call a foul. Well, he missed the bank, but uh, fortunately it's landed on the short rail and left Johnny up table. Well, he can try to put Raphael behind the six ball. Tough shot. Or he can thin the five on the right-hand side and try to put the cue ball behind the seven and the five ball into the six. That's the shot I liked. But he hit it so good that he killed it too much and didn't get behind the six. Sometimes you can hit a shot too well or too good. Oh, he's going to cut at this. I don't think he's playing safe. Cut it Beautiful in perfectly, shot. coming around table. Perfect position on the six ball. And he's even got where he can reach his body across the table, I think, and reach it. No, he's not going to. He's going to grab the bridge. Well, all he has to do here is not go on the side. Make the ball and don't go on the side. So this is low, left-hand English, ball first. Well, he didn't go on the side, but he's going to have to bank the seven. Well, it sure seemed like he hit that ball weak. 
Well, hitting it with the bridge, uh, he wouldn't get the same action as he would with his normal. He hit the stroke. bank with that one and a half speed to put it in the middle of the rail, but uh, missed the bank by a few inches. Well, Archer's really in trouble here. This bank is awkward, off angle. If I had to bank this, I'd bank it for uh, the far right-hand corner. I mean, there just isn't anything here. He's studying the lie of the seven ball. But if he banks it for the far left-hand corner, he can't get position on the nine. And he'd have to make two table length banks in a row in a pressure situation. Looks to me like he's looking at going rail first and trying to spin the seven ball into the left-hand pocket. Well. That would be all right if the cue ball were farther off the rail. But this cue ball is close enough to the rail that this that makes that next to impossible. Plus, at the angle he's shooting from, Jerry, he can't get enough speed on the seven to do anything with it. Well, I wouldn't want to be here. He figures this shot is so tough he's going to shoot it one-handed. No, he's just lining it up. <laughs> Maybe titillating the audience. Oh, I, I don't know about this. Of course, he doesn't have anything anyway. If you want to be a little creative, nothing the matter with that. Meanwhile, that's one great pool shot. That was a great shot. <laughs> well, he's going to let Raphael try it. How can the audience not give him an appreciative hand for that effort? That's as good a shot as I've ever seen in my life. Maybe they think he just absolutely tried to make it and just missed it. They don't realize he took a situation where it was low percentage for him to win and turned it into a plus. Oh, oh cut it shot. out. Cut it out. Look at that. And he's looking to see if he throws it on the rail. Well, is that disgusting to have that kind of eyesight and those that kind of nerves? I mean, there's something wrong here. Archer's muttering, and who could blame him? Well, that's two of the greatest shots I've ever witnessed in my entire career. Well, at least he's out in the middle of the table. He can make a better bridge. Well, that's Pat the, Fleming's uh, double kiss safety is here. How about it, fellas? I know what Pat Fleming would do. In my case, it would be simple. I'd just prepare my concession speech and be done with it. Just rack the balls and so you don't risk embarrassing yourself. All right. No, that double kiss safety, I believe, is the correct shot here. The idea is to strike the seven thickly, withdraw, and you double kiss the cue ball to the other end of the table. You hit it right square in the face. Right allow square the double in the face. That's the what... Withdraw. Well... Or he could put the seven over on the lower right-hand side rail. That's exactly what he did, only he elected to hit it. Well, it wasn't frozen, so he didn't have to. Well, I, I know, but he hit, he hit it lightly to keep the seven close to the rail there. Well, this is quite a safety battle we have in progress. Now, he's going to thin the seven. Put Johnny all the way up to the other end of the table. Now he's going to get him over the nine. Run! Now don't put him behind the lip of the nine. That <laughs> would be too cruel. Well, now it's time for the cream to come to the top, as they say. You might as well go ahead and take a bank at this. No reason to get cutesy. Boy. Well, he's got to go down shooting at the bank, not playing safe from this angle.
This is a long game. The winner of this game will take a one game lead. Notice he hit it on the thick side. It's the proper way to play it. He just hit it too thick. He was in a bad spot there. So Raphael won the safety engagement. And he is going to adopt a one game edge. Seven games to six. Martinez. Buddy Hall won a couple of games over there. He's still in it, 12 games to seven. I'll tell you what, uh, that would make, uh, you know, a, a great shot, both of those shots for the next highlight tape from AccuStats, those two safety shots. They really hit them good. That they did. And the balls. What a surprise. We're having a problem racking the balls. I'll tell you what. I I, <laughs> I just let him throw them up there. I'm, I wouldn't even. Next time I wouldn't even look at him. Give him a chance. See what see what the balls do. Just because every ball isn't frozen doesn't mean that they're not going to break well. Well, I can't believe that they have to tap the balls every rack. All right, here we go. Seven to six. Side, six in the corner, and a shot on the two ball. About the only thing he's got to watch here, Jerry, is that he doesn't scratch off the eight in the side. Doesn't even have to hit the eight. He'll use low with a touch of left English, a nice medium speed. Just like that. Now, I kind of like playing this four in, in the corner and staying on the rail side of straight in on the four ball and in that fashion he can draw beyond the eight. Well, he's going to have to go down on the left side of the five. Do I see the angle correctly? Yeah, he'll draw right back down and putting the cue ball into the left-hand uh, corner pocket. Watch Hopefully out, not in scratch. the corner pocket. Well, I guess I called it. Well, all he did was, I tell you, that was kind of a mental error there. If he stays on the right side of the four ball there, it's pretty hard to mess it up. And for Johnny Archer, it's a great opportunity. He's come out one rail. <coughs> for the seven ball. And he's going to play the eight ball in the same corner pocket. You use a little right English here. Nice speed. Just roll forward now as he pockets the eight ball. Nodding the score up at seven games apiece. And it's every inch as interesting and exciting as we first suspected. Buddy's at the table with a chance to get another game, get a little bit closer. See if they'll rack correctly this time. We get a final shot here of Buddy Hall pocketing the 8-9 to 
further his attempt at clawing in his way into the victory circle of that match. That'll make his buddies score eight games and Bustamante on the hill at 12. Don't make an error, buddy. 12 to 8 in the Bustamante Hall match and Johnny Archer moved back to the other side of the table. All right, he made two balls on the break and he does not have, I don't believe, a shot on the one ball, Jerry. Might have, but it sure looks like that one is stuck off the close to the rail. We'll know in just a moment if it's cuttable. Yeah, he's electing to try to spin it in without outside English, send the cue ball down two rails. Watch and five. he ran into the five ball and snuckered himself. What's the proper way to kick this ball? You kick it easy, right hand in. Just try to make a thick hit on the two ball and leave the cue ball right on the nine. And uh, expecting the two ball to venture nine. out how far? Well, the two ball, you only move it about a foot. Now, he's looking at going the other way. Now, if he has room to go around the five, I think that's the way to go. Raphael would like the tournament director to call the hit, just in case he happens to kind of split the two and nine ball. And we'll wait just to few seconds while Scott Smith finds his way to the table. And here he is in Satorial Splendor. Well, they hit it real solid. It wobbled the pocket and uh, has left Raphael straight in. He did tie the 8-7 up in kind of an awkward you position. The 7-9? Yes, the 7-9. Well, the 7 goes. He's got to get an angle on the 6 to stay on the right side of the 7 ball. You think the 7 goes in the left-hand pocket? Sure. I think it does. Maybe not. Maybe we can get a close-up of that down there. That's kind of... I don't. It doesn't look like it does to me. This is ideal. Low, left English, just pull the cue ball back seven or eight inches like that. Then one or two rails. I kind of like the one rail angle here because he's close to the rail, but the two rails and out is okay too. That's fine. He's going to follow down and back up the table a ways. He might have wanted to be perhaps slightly closer to the line. <laughs> Bustamante defeats Hall. 13 games to eight. Raphael taking a fractional lead at eight games to seven. Table six, Francisco Bustamante. He'll be back tomorrow. One o'clock, semifinal action. Maybe for him, could you have a hand for the rifleman, buddy Hall? Yo. Did you take coming out, buddy? Is he going to be available there very soon? Video? Check it out. Look for Buddy's new video. Buddy, thanks very much. Fourth place. Scott Smith over the PA is reminding the audience of Buddy Hall's new instructional video that's come out, which has been produced by AccuStats Video Production. Yeah, Pat Fleming has a host of quality tape products. I have a straight pool tape that Pat Fleming handles, too. Eight to seven. If the rack's okay, Martinez will prepare to break the balls. Well, we're finally beginning to get through the rack without quite so much aggravation. Okay, the two ball went, the one ball went. 
Now, if the three ball goes in the corner, I think he'll play it in the corner rather than the side. And what he'll have to do is elevate the cue and catch the bottom side of the seven ball with the cue ball so that he'll have position on the four ball. Elevate it just like that. Wants to graze the seven like that. Great shot. Nice shot. Great shot. Now I think he got pretty straight, so he'll just draw this back. Play the five in the same pocket, I believe. If I see the angle correctly. That seems to be what he's planning to do. Send the yeah. cue ball up one rail, playing the six ball in the side pocket. He may have missed cue. I think it'll still be workable. Might be flirting a little bit close to that far side pocket, but or the left-hand side pocket, but I don't foresee any problem. No, he can get position for the six on the side. It's just that this shot is missable every very once in a while. He certainly rolled forward farther than he wanted to. He'd have liked to have gotten straight in in the well, he's got the side six pocket, side. but he can roll straight up table with an angle on the seven. Watch don't out. Don't get on to the nine ball. Boy. Well, I'm really impressed with Raphael's shot making. Let's see how he does this. I think he's just going to try to come off the rail a couple of feet. Boy, I don't know if he can make the eight here. I mean, I know it's makeable, but it looks awfully thin. Well, it's certainly thinner than he wanted, but uh, rolling up on top of that nine ball certainly uh, made this rack went from easy to very difficult. And all of that because he either miscued or got careless when he drew back to get on the five ball. Nice shot. Cutting it in perfectly, coming straight down table and nine in the same pocket. Well, this guy has a lot of confidence in his shot making ability. Not scared to shoot anything. Nine games to seven. Boy, he is so serious at the table. He is serious. He's not taking anything lightly. Well, this is his business. I can't blame him for that. Wonder if we could get an update on what these players are shooting in the Akis dance. We'll impart that bit of information to you in just a few seconds. Raphael in very good action with his break shot. However, the one ball is going to end up on the side rail. Now, this ball isn't really bankable. He's it is bankable, he, but... He's going to shoot it cutting it in. No, he's not going to cut it. If he shoots it, he'll bank it. Might make it two rails. Oh. Okay. He made it. He, uh, great didn't... shot. Boy, he crossed that ball... Wonderfully. <laughs> it seemed like he was a little straighter angle than that. Was that that easy of a bank? No, it was a very difficult bank. But he thinks he can make anything, and uh, I, for one, believe him. Oh, he might have snookered himself. He did indeed. He either has to twist this or kick it. He has an angle here where he can elevate the cue. I don't think he really has to mass it. And the left English thus imparted to the cue ball will curve it, oh, three-eighths of an inch or so to his left. He's going to the rail. Kicking That's it up table. Good shot. The good nine shot. ball impeding the progress of the four and the eight ball right there in the middle. Very good. That was a well-thought-out safety. Nicely executed, high percentage, and undoubtedly dismaying to County Archer. Now, did it? Did he have to go in to those that seven eight on the side rail yeah, there? Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. His other option on that shot 
risk would have been to hit the rail, the eight ball, and, and back out oh, a couple of feet, but not so easy to, to do. Now he's got a nice, relatively easy rack here. Now all he wants to do here is not come anywhere close to the nine. So he's going to draw this out, low left English. A little straighter than he meant to be. I think I'd draw this back and just play the eight in the corner. But he can play it in the side just as well. This is the best way. And shoot and stop from this position. And our score is going to be 10 games to 7 Martinez. And we're going to take a short pause to change the tape. Here we are. Thanks for your company. Thanks for your interest in a great sport. Now, Grady, the winner of this match will be in the hot seat, or the winner of the winner's bracket. What is the format of this tournament well, all the for the finals? All the tournaments on the tour play a single match final. Uh, so it's a race to 15. And here's Raphael's break shot. No reason to change the break position given past success. But he failed to pocket a ball on the break. This is not that good a shot. Johnny Archer apparently is going to avail himself of his break. We'll take a break along with him. We'll rejoin you shortly. We've taken the liberty of editing a few seconds out of there, a minute or two. Johnny's taken his break and he's back to the, to the table. You know, I can't say enough, Jerry, about the kind of rekindled deportment of the modern-day players. I think they're a credit to the sport. Deportment? Does that mean that some of them are being deported? For no, it means the way they conduct themselves, their behavior. Surely I I mean, when you, with you. when you consider that you get, oh, I don't know, 80 or 100 of the best players in the world, and they all need to have a nice payday, and only a few of them are going to, um, it's saying something for them. Well, we're kind of snookered. We can see it very nicely on the monitor, though. Now, that's funny. It looks like a better shot on the monitor. It looks eminently possible. Yeah, it doesn't look too difficult pocket. to roll forward, kick, kick the two up a little bit. And, uh, Isn't that funny? Didn't that look like a much harder shot as we viewed it on the table? Yeah, it did. Maybe I, when I play my matches, I'll look at it on the monitor if I don't like my shot, and maybe it'll change it. I know you're kidding, but I tell you what, a, perspect a larger perspective playing pool is often very helpful, as you well know. Sometimes we get that tunnel vision and only see uh, a few options or only see a very uh, limited viewpoint, but really standing back and looking at things from many angles, things can definitely get a little bit clearer. No question about it. The big view, I think they term it. <laughs> All right. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, a thought came to mind, that, and I, uh, I'm not going to say it. Let's watch Johnny Archer clear <laughs> these remaining balls. And he's going to plan to play the sixth ball in the left-hand side pocket. And it would appear that he has obtained a near-perfect angle on the sixth ball. Now he doesn't want to be straight in, even though the eight doesn't appear to be especially problematic. Well, do you remember the very first game when he had a six-ball shot and he tried to hit it with just above center right English? Uh, actually, the... the uh, where he was lying, it just reversed. Anyway, he didn't get good action, so he decided to draw this one. 
and that's fine. I like what he did there. And again, I would go two rails here. Most definitely not one. And given my choice, I kind of prefer using a touch of inside English and going to the left side of the nine ball. Just like that, down to the end rail and back up. But he struck it a little firmly. Still in pretty good shape, though. This one, low with just a touch of left. Come out two rails. And the score is 10 games to 8. Advantage Martinez. Now, if Johnny can get the break working, put a rack or two together, boy, we're going to have uh, quite a finish. Uh, does anybody have an idea how long this match has been in progress? 95 minutes, and we've played uh, 18 games. That's five and five eighteenths minutes. Uh, Let's see, 9, 30. Um, anyway, it's, a, it's roughly 5 minutes and 20 seconds per game of 9-ball. Obviously, the rack time and a couple of breaks have accumulated to that. Let's take a second here while well, we've got a second and uh, look over the TPA or the total performance average of uh, the players. Raphael is shooting a 914, and Johnny Archer is shooting an 884. And looking at the mistakes made by each of the players, Martinez has mess missed three balls. Archer's only missed one. Uh, and then on position errors, Martinez has made only three position errors, and Johnny has made five position errors. Uncharacteristic of Johnny Archer, too. He's turned into one of the fine position players on the tour. And I guess the most important characteristic of the averages is that Raphael has pocketed approximately 85 balls and Johnny has only pro pocketed approximately 61 balls. This was all according to the last rack. Well, look at this. The 7 and 9 are tied up and the 1 doesn't go anywhere. pretty tough here. There's not any reasonable bank on the one. He's going to have to play another safety. Oh, well, he might be able to shoot the one straight in the corner. That's probably what he's going to elect to do. Johnny asked him to hold up for one second until Scott Smith can come over to watch the shot, see to it that he doesn't double hit the cue ball. Well, as you suggested earlier, he's very adept at elevated cue shots. But it looked like he kind of twisted his cue there a little bit. Didn't you see? Did you see that? Well, he didn't seem to be quite as deliberate as I, I, I would expect. It seems like he kind of just got up there and poked it, as if it was. Re In other words, he's human. Is that what you're hinting at? Yeah, I think he actually uh, didn't give it all the concentration he normally does. It's now, amazing. this is one of those, as they say, you can't get there from here. The only thing he can do is plan to play the three up the long rail. And it's frozen, if I'm not mistaken. And he's over the eight ball. So I think the right shot here is to make the two ball just a nice slow, medium speed and plan to play safe on the three ball. And again, as we've touched on many times in the past, having a good game plan when a player comes to the table is paramount. Simplistic as it may sound, you say to yourself, boy, if I make the two ball, I stay at the table. Now, uh, Raphael could go into the seven, but he can't do that because he wouldn't be able to see the three ball. He has a shot here, Jerry, I believe, where he can draw the ball and go between the seven, eight, nine there, down to the end rail, and then, then he would draw it with uh, right-hand English, and in that fashion, I believe he can get on the three ball. 
Unless the angle he's is lo he's more looking severe than I think. He's looking at that route. <laughs> Don't have to hit this very hard. Just hard enough to keep the draw on the cue ball. Low, right hand English. Well, he didn't really draw it. No, y y instead of... Uh, possibly trying to spin it over to the left-hand side of the table underneath the five ball, it seemed like he was uh, trying to just hit it with center ball and come up in the middle of the table, which is what he did and which has left him hooked. Yes, it has. I wouldn't shoot this hard. You might break out the seven and nine some kind of way. He's an interesting guy. You know, he tried to make that. He tried to kick it in hard. I mean, you got to admire the guy's spirit uh, and guts. I mean, I, I don't know, but he, he can't be married. You lose a lot of that when you're married, so he just can't be. Just kidding. All right. He has an angle to go two rails into the seven and nine right now, but of course if he does that, he could end up over the seven or the nine ball with the cue ball. I kind of like planning to play the six in the left-hand side pocket or corner more than any of the other pockets on the table to get a chance to, to break out the 7-9. That's what he's looking at, is he'd like to play it in the left uh, corner pocket uh, and achieve an angle that he can squirt the ball or basically come off the six into the 7-9. However, the angle that he has on the five ball makes it difficult for him to come straight up table. That's what he's deliberating right now. Well, what you if should it, be if thinking. If it was closer to the pocket, he'd be able to come straight up, have a nice angle on the six, and go into the seven nine. What he's supposed to be thinking to himself is, I'm a great player. I've got a good shot to start with. If I don't get out here, let's make sure that Raphael has nothing to shoot at. In other words, don't make an unforced error. Tell you what, he's gotten a pretty nice angle. I think that's exactly where he wanted to be. And what he wants to do here, Jerry, is hit the high side of the seven ball. That'll push the nine out into the middle of the table. We'll bring the seven, up, uh, uh, leave the seven near the hole, and bring the cue ball closely to it. Which should well, I wouldn't hit this very hard. Make an easy shot. Hit it hard. It's possible to even hit the eight. He looked at that. And it's hard to control possible route of the seven and nine I'd hit this a nice medium speed try to hit the high side of the seven just like that that was a nicely executed shot can we get a close-up of the seven and nine here okay I think the seven goes if so and the bigot could be on too but if the seven goes he'll just slice it in the corner I think he's uh, Something on indicating the there's a hair on the cue ball, asking Scott Smith to remove it. And we won't hazard a guess as to where that came from. No, I practiced on that table this morning, and I'm, you know, everybody knows I'm bald, so... <laughs> I wants to hit this in with no English, up and down the table. Beautifully done. And he's going to be rewarded for it. I want you to know, Grady, I could get out from here. I believe you could, Jerry. Tell you what, he made a nice run out. Well thought out and nicely executed. And what a match we have. It's 10 games tonight.
I love these matches like this where the players show great courage and forging comebacks and uh, copious displays of intelligent shot selection. Too much trouble. Well, Grady, where are you headed after this tournament? I know you've been up here on business. I'm going home. Business I'm going home for a month, and then uh, I'm going out on the road for three months. I, that's what I do. I usually take three-month road trips. I have custody of my kids who are 10 and 8 half the time, and uh, the half the time that I have them is when I'm at home. All right. Assuming the rack passes Johnny's inspection, we're ready to go. Ten games to nine, Martinez. Corner ball firing into the pocket, rolling the nine in front of the corner pocket, and the one ball in a very good position to play the one nine combination. Yes, it would appear that barring the inexplicable, we're going to have a 10 10 deadlock. What is he considering here? Whether he wants to go rail first? Well, it's a little bit off the rail. Yeah, rail first, I think, is the right way to play it, but like that. Yeah. Well, as they say, Jerry, it just doesn't get any better than this. Nip and tuck the whole way. And I'll tell you what, we're seeing one, one heck of a well-played match, too. The only mistakes have been ones where uh, the, the execution factor was very difficult. Scott Smith watching very closely. I like Scott's tie, by the way. And one more time, Johnny scrutinizes the rack. Crowd wrapped. Could almost hear a pin drop in this room. This ancient arena of pocket period wars. <coughs> well, he failed to pocket the ball on the break. Raphael has to be a little careful here. I think he should play the one six combination. Well, no kidding, but I mean he's got to be <laughs> careful how he does this. I see this is tough. I don't like where he got here. That's what I meant by you have to be a little bit careful. I would have wanted to get an angle on the one different than this. I mean, there's no clear, easy route to the two ball here. Well, he found one. That wasn't easy, though. 
Believe me, that was very nicely executed, but tough. Okay, this is near perfect. You just draw this back a little bit for position on the four ball on the side pot. <coughs> and with the angle he has here, he's going to plan to play the five in the side, I suspect. And he has, he's on the right side of the five to get on the seven comfortably. Low, maybe just a touch of right. He's going to plan to play the eight ball in the lower left hand side, or corner pocket, excuse me. Just below center, left hand English. That's a little weak, but he's all right here. He can go two or three rails. And at the moment, he's sure making the game appear easy. Well, he's back in the commanding position again with a one-game lead over Johnny Archer and breaking the ball with 11 games to 10. Well, it's nice to be breaking only needing two games. Every great player in the world feels like he's out from there. Well, I have to admit that would be an exciting ending. Well, he has to be careful because if Archer gets to return to the table, it could be all she wrote. He's more certainly capable of running three racks himself, which is all he needs. I might take a little, little of the power off of the break here, just to make sure I control the cue ball. Boy, what a break. What a break. All right, he's got a problem here, though. He's got to draw this, or he won't have a shot on the three. And by drawing it, it makes the pocketing of the four ball somewhat more difficult. He's got to use a little right English. And I would hit this uh, as easy as I could which translates to like a medium speed shot with low right English. I played overcut the four slightly. Beautifully done. Now, one, two natural rails, no English, or three rails if you want, straight back and forth across the table. He sure does not wish to make an unforced error at at this juncture. Two, I, I thought that two was correct from the outset. And now, just a little draw. No reason to risk missing the seven ball here. Doesn't have to get close to the eight. All he needs to do is not get straight in. That's an ideal angle. Now he can go two rails with high right-hand English. Nice medium speed. A little farther than he meant to be. So he's going to have to stay down on this ball. Nice thin hit on the nine. Notice he's not going to strike this very hard. A lot of players hit this shot too hard. This is a slow, medium speed. Play to overcut it a little. Good Excellent. shot. That shot was missable, Grady. Yes, it was. Not that you would miss it. Well, I missed, I missed some of those, but that's a shot that good players make. I mean, they know the speed to hit it. They know they have to overcut it a little bit. And now it's 12 games to 10, and we've cut to the chase, have we not? Here we go. What a great match. Boy, he struck that last break. Textbook perfect. Cue ball right in the middle of the table. Corner ball directly into the pocket. And one ball on the side. 
Couldn't have asked for more. I'm not sure that that last rack that the cluster of nine balls didn't implode. He hit them with such force and accuracy. He killed the cue ball in the middle of the table, made three balls on the break. The epitome of nine ball perfection. And he's been that pretty much the whole tournament. Well, for Johnny, uh, boy, I tell you what, you'd be hard pressed to fault his play. <coughs> Played very well. It boils down to this, Jerry. I just uh, think that Raphael has played better than anybody in the tournament. And that translates to the title. I'd love to see Raphael win this tournament. Look at Two that. He killed it break. in the middle of the table. Three again. balls on the break. And he's going to have to play the combination, I think. I don't know that the two passes the nine. And even if it did, he'd have to play the 5-9 combination, so we might as well go ahead and play this now. And I would pull the cue ball back and try to leave it right on top of the 7. If I see the angle correctly. Well, he missed the ball, but he uh, wisely was drawing the cue ball back to the end rail right, to right. create distance and certainly make it difficult on Johnny. Well, <laughs> this is Johnny's last uh, hurrah at the table, likely to be. Yes. And what a shot to have to begin with. Well, I think he has to knock the two ball one rail up to the middle of the end rail and try to leave the cue ball behind the six ball. That's pretty much all he has. He wants to be nice and smooth, stay down, follow through, no English. Uh, he hit it weak. Well, he hit it a little thinner than he meant to, too. Well, Raphael's going to shoot to just cut this in and, and hope for the best. I don't think so. Now, he's playing good aggressive pool, but he can't get on the five ball here. Raphael's my man. If he can't do it, nobody can. That's what I always say. Thank you. Nice talking to you. Straight in on the five ball. Stop well, ball shot. i tell you what, that's a great the, shot. On the six, and uh, see you later. Well, Grady, this match has run quite long with uh, with the time it took to rack the balls and the and the two breaks that each player have made. I don't think we're going to have time for an interview. No, we're we're not, and that dismay dismays even me of the nocturnal proclivity. The nocturnal proclivity. Your words are so eloquent. I was wondering if you'd consider giving me a bedtime story tonight. Well, I can't do that. You're not the proper persuasion. <laughs> well, this match is going to be over with. It. Given the way Raphael's played, there's no way he's going to miss this ball. We're out of time. Thanks. Good night.